In this video, we are going to look at Burp's BAMDA feature, but not for filtering our HTTP history, but actually transforming it in an interesting way that helps us potentially to stay organized or identify things that we might otherwise miss. This particular technique was inspired by Sarush Dalili, who uh, tweeted about it not too long ago, and I'll link that in the description of the video. I'm also going to link uh, an intro to Burp's BAMDAs because this is not an intro. So do go and take a look at that before diving in. So let's jump in here. We are going to configure our filter and I'm gonna switch it from settings mode to BAMDA mode. And whoops, spoilers, there's all the code we're gonna write. But we're gonna start with this very simple uh, filter here that just returns true. So we're going to um, not filter out any items, right? For everything, uh, we filter it all. And I'm also going to unhighlight everything, which is also a spoiler. What we're going to do here is we're going to use some logic within our BAMDA in order to highlight specific requests that might be of interest to us. Sorry, by requests, I mean request response pairs, right? History items. And it turns out that this is very simple to do. So instead of actually you know, filtering anything, we can continue to return true, right? So we're not gonna filter anything out. Um, but what we're going to do is uh, run this conditional on our request response object. And we're going to ask the question, does it contain a string that we're interested in? And for our purposes, I'm just going to use username as the string. Uh, by the way, for all of this functionality, of course, the references are provided above. You can look up the uh, API uh, resource uh, resources reference material. You can also kind of remove that from the view to give yourself more space like I just did right there. Easy as that. Uh, though we do have a nice uh, autocomplete and uh, inline documentation, which is great. Uh, but I don't already know how it works, obviously, because I've already done this. Um, and so here, our contains method is going to take a string, and it's also going to take a Boolean for whether we want this to be case sensitive, which I'm just going to say no, we're fine without it. And uh, we're going to add some curly braces for our conditional here. So we're asking the question, you know, does our request or response contain username? And if it does, what do we want to do? Well, what we can do is we can take the request response object here and we can get the annotations object and we can run on that set highlight color. There we go, autocomplete makes it easy for us. Uh, whoops, and we can set the highlight color. Oh, it was giving us our options right there. Can I bring it back? Uh, nope, that's okay. Highlight. Um, color we want, let's go with blue. So what is going on here? Well, again, we're asking the question, does our re a request or response in our history contain the string username? And if it does, let's take that request response pair and let's highlight it blue. Uh, and we're not going to filter anything, right? We're returning true, right? We're not removing anything from our history. So when I click apply, what you're going to see is some items turn blue. And every other item also remains in our history here. So we can go and take a look at any of those individual items. Of course, these ones make sense, right? It's the login request. So the login contains username as a string. You can see that I already have username in both the request and the response search fields there. And in the request, it occurs once. And in the response, it occurs a number of times. You might find this very helpful for working with payloads if you're just kind of spraying payloads into an application. Maybe you want to include some type of identifier that you then filter, um, or, or not filter, but highlight using a BAMDA in your history so that you can see as you're navigating the application where that pops up. Another feature or another way to use this that was also suggested um, that I'm going to explore later is using this with um, an, an extension in the browser to uh, differentiate between user roles and, and which role uh, a request has originated from. You could use it to identify potentially sensitive information that might be leaking to systems or services that were not intended, right? By expanding your scope to look at, uh, well, not necessarily expanding your scope, but expanding your uh, history, what you're viewing in your history, and to include all of the analytics and, and, and third-party services that are used by your target application and seeing if you have any highlighted requests by setting up a highlighter that is uh, contingent on the request or response containing uh, user specific data. You can do all kinds of things like that. What we're going to do is I'll just show you one other way that we can expand this functionality right here. So we can open up our BAMDA configuration once again. 
We could also just copy this over, uh, paste it. So I have two conditionals and we could go even, we could add some specificity here. So if the request response and in particular, the request object contains the username, um, whoops, we want this to be uh, contains, then we'll set it to blue. But if the request response objects uh, response contains the username, then we'll set it to red. Uh, you will see one issue with this kind of naive implementation here, and that is that we got we get a lot of requests that are just red, even though we know that it's also username is also contained in the response. So one thing you could also do to expand this is um, well, first keep in mind that you know it, it's red because we have these uh, conditionals in in sequence here, and we also haven't accounted for the possibility that both a request and a response includes a username. Uh, you could do something very simple here by uh, just uh, expanding with an additional uh, conditional, where we have you know if uh, both the request and the response contains the username, then set the highlight to yellow. There we go, that should hopefully work. Oh, it's giving me an error. I have missed something. Uh, I've missed an R. Does that do it? Nope, I also have an extra uh, parenthesis. Does that do it? <laughs> yeah, there we go. So now you can see that there are some instances where username appears only in the response. The yellow ones are where it's in the request and the response. And uh, I think if we scroll far enough into history, there we go, we will see some requests with um, the uh, username um, only in the request, right? So it's it's highlighted blue. Uh, there's one other, you know, once you have highlighted requests, there's actually one other interesting thing that you can do with the uh, with the BAMDA filter here. And so in addition to using it to highlight things, we can also use it to uh, filter highlights. Uh, and it's quite simple. So we can return all of the request response pairs or items in our history where the annotations object has a highlight color that equals blue. That looks correct. What have I typoed? Ah. I'm missing this. What else am I missing? Oh, otherwise good. Okay, so we could do this, right? We could filter uh, and you know you could remove this logic too that changes the color of your items in your history, uh, but we'll just keep it for now. And once I apply it, you can see that we filter for all the items that are blue, which of course is only one, but you could expand this, right? You could expand this to, um, uh, you could expand this to be items that are, uh, you could expand it to be all highlighted items by returning all the items that are not type none. So you also have uh, type none, highlight color none available as the default unhighlighted item. And you could also uh, create conditions for uh, different colors to return in combination. There's so much you can do with it. Um, I haven't really done anything with it in practice. I haven't used highlighting, honestly, in my testing career for anything. This makes it a little bit more accessible, I think, in terms of um, putting it to use. Um, but uh, I, I think that uh, I can envision some potential use cases, and uh, certainly it's an interesting feature that is now available within Burp. So I might uh, I might keep it in mind the next time I'm on an engagement and have some use case for uh, tracking certain information through history with highlights by being able to you know quickly go into my history and look at okay well where is this information appearing throughout my history uh, give it a try hopefully you can find some interesting use cases and if you do i would love to hear from you so please do comment and let me know